Morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, welcome to God Manchester Baptist Church. Um, our all age uh, celebration this morning. Opportunity for us all to worship together. Opportunity for us all to learn together um, and to think about God. This morning, we are going to be thinking a little bit about the fact that God doesn't have a holiday. Now, that might be obvious to you. Um, and if you've read um, the whole of your Bible a number of times, like I know some of you have, um, you might want to challenge me on that. Um, and maybe you'll get a chance later. Uh, maybe it, um, for you, you're trying to work out where in the Bible does it even talk about holidays. Um, we're going to come to that as well. Today, um, for our uh, celebration, uh, we are recording um, the whole of it for YouTube. Um, just to assure you that the cameras, welcome to those who are with us. I should be standing here probably. Welcome to those who are with us online. Um, and um, the cameras are always on the stage. They're not um, on the congregation. And later on, when you join in, don't leave. You'll enjoy it. Uh, later on, when you join in, the cameras won't be on you. Um, so don't, um, don't worry about that bit. Um, it will be opportunity. The cameras will be on the stage or um, on the PowerPoint presentation. Um, so please be assured of that. As I said, we're thinking about um, God's not going on holiday. Um, I wonder if anyone here, um, we have a couple of roving mics ready. Um, anyone here has been on holiday um, or is going on holiday and would like to tell us where they've been or where they are going? Could you hold that and then as people put their hands up, get ready to run down that side? Excellent. Anyone who's been on holiday? Kath has got her hand up. Mike coming towards you. I went on holiday in March to St. Louis in America because four of our family live there. Amazing. That's great. Anyone else? We have a hand at the back. Go ahead towards the back, Sarah. Roger, there's one at the front. I know Roger's gone that way. Roger, if you head to the front for me. So we've got one at the back. Let's, where are you going on holiday? Um, we, are have, we are having a staycation with our friends. Fantastic. Staycation with your friends. That sounds like a great thing. Voice came somewhere different there at the back. Yeah, I'm going holiday to Uganda, but not really holiday. Going for a crusade and a minister conference. Fantastic. Uh, let's go. Yep. So at the back, mum or dad can tell us where you're going. We went to Cornwall. We went to Cornwall. Fantastic. Anyone else? At the front here, we've got one, Sarah. Anyone else? No, no. Okay, yep. We've went to France. You're going to France. Fantastic. Behind there. Next month, we're going to Scotland. Off to Scotland. And October, we're going to Great Yarmouth for our wedding anniversary. Amazing. That's good. Over here, yes? We went to the Cotswolds. Off to the Cotswolds. Is that the part of the garden centre where you buy stones? <laughs> uh, here, yes? Uh, on Thursday, we're going to Hans Stanton with our little grandson. Fantastic. Off to Hans Stanton. Lots of people. Oh, no. Yeah, go on. That's fine. Don't want anyone to miss out. Uh, in May, we went to Wales with um, other members of our family. You went to Wales on holiday? We all, at different times, we all at different times um, will go on holiday, been on holiday, um, had holidays. That might be staycations, that may be different countries, different places um, that we've been to. Um, but what does it mean... When we go on holiday, for you to think about, what does it mean when we go on holiday and we think about um, who God is and how we engage um, with God during that time? Today, in our, um, as I say, we're all going to be involved together um, and we're going to um, have some um, sung worship for us to join in with. And part of our sung worship uh, will be songs that maybe the adults know more. Some of it may be the songs that the children know more. Um, and um, it's for us all to join in. If you're not sure about the words, adults, if you're not sure about the words, um, then um, read them. Think about them. Think about your worship through them. 
Children, if you're not sure about some of the words of the songs, um, then the same. Read the words and see what they mean. See what they tell us about our amazing God. I'm going to read uh, a psalm, a song of praise written by David many years ago, still relevant to us today. And then we're going to stand and sing um, songs of worship. Um, and our second two, so we've got three songs, not our first one, our second and third one, um, there are um, actions um, to help us in our worship if you'd like to join in. So if you want to help with the actions, you can, um, but we can worship through each of the songs. Let's stand together if we're able. If you want to grab a flag and come and worship um, with flag at the front or the back, I'm going to read Psalm 100, then hand straight over to John. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love is endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations.
Excellent. It's time for our family news, opportunity to hear about things that are happening um, across uh, God Manchester Baptist Church. A few different things to tell you about, so encourage you to um, think about it. It won't be for everyone. You can't all come to everything, um, but there'll be something, I'm sure, which is um, important. Um, we're going to start off in just a moment with a short video telling you a little bit about the marriage course, and then Cliff and Vilma are going to come and explain more. Thank you very much. Getting married provides us with one of life's greatest opportunities 
and one of its greatest challenges. The opportunity to build the most intimate of relationships or pre-marriage course offers couples the opportunity to invest in their relationship. They provide the practical tools that will help any couple build a strong marriage, no matter how long they've been together. On both courses, the setting feels like a date. The first part of every session is spent relaxing with something to eat and drink. This is followed by watching a film about different aspects of marriage, broken up by times for discussion as a couple. All your conversations are completely private. Join the marriage or pre-marriage course to discover how to love each other better and not just stay together, but grow and thrive as a couple. Good morning. This is Cliff. Morning. I'm Vilma. And we're here to just to give a little plug on the marriage course, which is starting in September. And so G GBC is offering this uh, course, and it's a seven-week course to all couples. Um, so if you've been married for a few months, a few years, or a few decades, this marriage is designed for you. This course, at least, is designed for you. <laughs> Uh, I've, as we've just seen in the video, the marriage course is designed to help us discover how to love each other better. And not just stay together, but to grow and thrive in this relationship. So as you can see from the uh, screen, it's a seven-week um, course. And it's designed to... Um, to help couples invest in their relationship, as it says there. And how we do it here at GBC is that we will set up the small hall and you'll be going out for a meal. And that's exactly what you'll be doing. You'll be eating together and it'll be set up as tables for two. And um, you'll watch a series of talks and talk to each other about the subjects. And I think the most important thing to know is that everything you talk about is private. It's just between the two of you. And no one will be listening and no one will be joining in your conversation either. That's right. Uh, each session features experts offering advice and sharing stories from around the world. And topics covered in the marriage course include the art of conversation, resolving conflict, the power of forgiveness and the impact of family, past and present. Nearly two million people in over a hundred countries have attended the marriage course and almost everyone says it has a positive impact on their relationship and almost 75% say they have experienced a significant improvement. So the course will start on Monday, September the 4th here at GBC, as I said, in the small hall. And as you can see, um, it's free. But if you want to make donations, you're more than welcome. So, why attend the marriage course? Well, aside from the reasons already mentioned, it's fun. You spend an enjoyable evening together, away from the kids if you have any. And as Vilma said, in all the discussions are private. Who is the course for? Well, as I mentioned before, whether you've been married for a few months or decades, whether you're in a time of marriage bliss or struggling, because the course is here to help you navigate through the joys and the challenges of marriage. It's based on Christian principles, but designed to encourage any of us in our relationships with one another. So if you're interested, let me encourage you to sign up quickly. If you want more information, speak to Vilma or I or Daniel. And if anyone fancies making some desserts for the course, speak to Haley, please. And finally, while we're up here, can I just put in a quick plug for the GBC Facebook page? Have a look at it. It has a lot of good information on it. It carries all the GBC activities. It has a daily prayer and wake up and worship. 
posted every morning at 6.30 a.m. And it would be great help if you liked or shared the post because that's what gets the word around. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a bit of a taste of what the marriage course is. Um, not possible to cover everything, but if you're interested, um, please speak to Cliff and Vilma um, about what it means. And um, if you're not able to make a Monday, um, but you're still interested in what it means, please speak to us. Um, we're not able to run the course lots of times, but um, there are other options as well. So um, please uh, be aware of that and think about how um, that is able um, to, something you might be able to join in with. Um, uh, marriage course is part of um, what we call our toolbox, different ways of people learning, growing, discipling, and um, also uh, ready for the autumn. We have a walk through the Bible um, booked for Saturday, the 11th of November. Um, a great opportunity for you to learn more about the Bible. Uh, you might not really know a lot about it. You might find it complicated. You might find it um, straightforward. But I encourage you, if you're free at all, um, to come along. Um, the more we understand the context um, of the Bible and how it works as such, the easier it is for us to use in day-to-day -day life. Um, so if you're available, um, I encourage you to come along um, to that Saturday the 11th. That information should all be out. Uh, what is happening in September? Someone tell me what's happening in September. This might go wrong. The mix! The mix amazing! Please watch the screens. And find out a little bit more about the mix. Hi, Sammy. Hello, Danny. How are you? I'm okay. What about you? Did you find your diary? Yes. And I've written the mix in big letters. On Sunday, the 3rd of September, I've handed in my booking form too. Have you booked, Danny? I've got my form here. Well... You do need to hand it in. I've not quite finished filling it in yet. I'm a bit mixed up about what to do. I don't know what job to volunteer for. Well, what would you like to do, Danny? I don't know, Sammy. Do I have to do a job? Everyone is being asked to help out. If we all do a little bit, then we can share the load. And even jobs that are normally a bit Boring can be lots of fun when you do them together. Well, what jobs are there? All sorts of things need doing, like serving dinner, washing up. I don't mind helping, but I will need a hand. We'll both need a hand, whatever we do. I still don't know what to put on my form. You can leave that blank for now. There will be a big list out nearer the time with all the jobs and you can sign up for one of them then. OK, I'll choose my job later. What are you going to do, Sammy? I'm helping with the puppet workshop. You'll be good at that. So, what do I do with this form now? Give it to Joe Collinson or Anne Ambler or you can give it to Daniel or Carolyn and they'll pass it on. Anne will take your money too. Oh, I haven't got any money with me. Perhaps I'll hand in the form in next week. No, give your form in now. And you can pay online if you like, or pay later. It will help Joe with counting the number of people who've already booked. OK. I'll go and do that now. See you later, Sammy. See you later, Danny. Bye! Mm -hmm. From, uh, from the response last time uh, Danny and Sammy came and spoke to us, um, it seems to me that you all listen more to puppets than to people, <laughs> and it might mean we change the way we do some things. But for those of you who haven't yet listened to the puppets, um, please, um, if you know that you're available and come in, uh, it'd be great for you to book in. Um, it does help as, um, well, they've said everything, but please um, come along. If you're not sure what the mix is, um, then please ask one of us. Um, it's a great, um, great day. Um, and lots is booked and ready to go. Um, so the more of you that are there, the better. 
Just to say, uh, also, uh, Songs of Praise congregation is meeting this afternoon. Um, so please praise this afternoon as they meet, um, as they join together to worship God. Um, and um, that's open to anyone. So if you'd like to come, you're very welcome. Or perhaps there's someone um, that you would like to invite to that. Um, that's this afternoon at four o'clock. I'm going to ask David to come. Um, it's good to share testimony. And when we hear the word testimony, we sometimes think um, of the time that we became a Christian um, and the moment that um, we said yes to God. Uh, but testimony is also about us sharing good things about God, good things that he's done and good things um, that we're involved in. And da- No, come on, David, that's fine. I'm just waiting for you to get here. David's going to tell you about a couple of things he's been involved in. Um, just pull that out. That's it. Listen carefully um, and see if you can remember where he's been. This is billed as witness, but really it's a bit of an advert for an organization called Through Faith Missions. Um, We are national. It's an ecumenical organization. We'll take people from any Christian flavor, and the aim is to be evangelical. Our basic operating method is to support local churches with evangelism. And we use a questionnaire and a little booklet called Knowing God Personally. I've left copies by the outer door, uh, and I can talk anybody through them later. And we go out on the streets, and we knock on doors. Um, But as I say, the main aim is in support of local churches. This was really the wash-up from a series of missions in Basingstoke where we supported four churches at the charismatic end of the spectrum, very bouncy. Um, And you'll see that we were out on the streets there. We had a little group singing while some of us walked around um, doing the questionnaire with people in the town. But then in May, um, we spent a week along the North Norfolk coast And the aim was to walk from church to church, uh, across seven churches, um, supporting them with evangelism, um, door knocking and stopping people in the streets. That was a great plan, but by the time we got there, the church leadership had imploded. So we ended up ministering to the churches as much as going out um, and talking to people in the streets. But... um, we, we sleep on the church floors. We rely on the local people to feed us. That went a bit wrong in places because of the implosion. So thank you very much to the prayer group that prayed for us. It did come good in the end. Um, this is perhaps the most uncomfortable time I've had in my life in a long time. The lady in the middle was our little group leader, and she insisted that we go out and sing on the village green. My voice is not good at the best of times, but I tell you, it's a fantastic, it was an experience. And sorry, yes, going back to that one, some of you might recognize the guy at the front there. It's not Pep Guardiola. Um, We bumped into each other by pure chance on the first day. And the, the, the story I'll give you from this mission is from Paul and Evia, um, We had a a wash-up service in this little church at the end of the week, and we got to the stage where we were praying for people at the end of the service, and two ladies walked in, Um, and one of them was a Muslim, and she was driving around her friend who was a Jew, and the Jewish lady said, can you just stop? I want to go into that church, and as I say, she walked in at the back end. And she saw us praying for people, and she walked up, and she said, can you pray for me? Well, Paul and Evia did. Um, They took her right through our little booklet, Knowing God Personally. They got her to say the prayer, committing herself to Jesus. And she said, the problem is, I'm a Jew, and I quite like my Jewish faith. And quick as a flash, Evia said, well, that's all right. You can be a Messianic Jew. Gave her the Bible, well, stole my Bible to give to her, and she went away as happy as a a lamb. Um, Anyway, and then the final one I want to talk you through, um, just in June, 
we were asked to help as uh, festival chaplains at the Donington Download Festival. I don't know whether any of you know it, if you're heavy metal fans, used to be called Monsters of Rock. Um, you'll see there were six of us there as part of this group supporting three local churches. Um, one was Baptist, one was Methodist, one was Anglican. 120,000 people. You can either see them as 120,000 people who dress horribly and are sometimes extremely rude to Christians, or you can see them as 120,000 of God's children who he loves and wants talking to. As you can see, they dress strangely, but they can be the nicest people you've come across. And we had far less trouble at this festival with drunkenness or anything else than I get on a Saturday night as a street pastor in Cambridge. Really, it was, it was quite fascinating. Um, this guy came up with a very obnoxious T-shirt on, hoping to um, get us all to fall down in pieces. But because we didn't and we welcomed him, he ended up shaking our hands and smiling and asking us to rub sun cream into him. Um, <laughs> I mean, another, uh, as a lot of you will know, um, it's a great honor, a great privilege to pray with people. And when you're praying for somebody whose daughter has tried to commit suicide and is in, um, in intensive care, it's extremely humbling. Um, but, you know, there are up times as well. And on the Sunday, we got permission to hold a communion service and we had about 40 people turn up for that. And uh, yeah, all I can say is it's an organization we get involved in very interesting places. If anybody wants to know anything about it, please come and see me afterwards. And even if you're not interested in going out on the streets, we'll always take your money. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Thank you, David. Um, opportunity where David's been out um, to share um, good news, um, which we are all called to do at many different times, and um, may make you think about um, being doing that in an intentional way, or how do we do that day to day? Um, I did love it that when the picture of our friend Paul um, came on the screen, that David said, this is my most awkward moment ever. Um, <laughs> Those of us know um, Paul, um, that might be um, relatable, um, but um, yeah, um, be praying um, for um, through faith uh, missions, isn't it? I always get it wrong. Yeah, through faith missions. Be praying for them as they do it, and if you want to know more, then please ask. Um, and if you have uh, test me of something you've been involved in, something you've been able to serve God, see people come to him possibly, um, then I encourage you um, to come and let us know so we can share that together. We're going to um, spend a moment in prayer, and our children are going to lead us um, in our praying. Um, Paul and um, helpers are going to come, and um, with Kids Kingdom, they've been learning a song and signing to that song. And the words of this song um, are a prayer. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to hand over to Paul, who's going to come. Um, but as we do this together, and the children come up and teach us um, and lead us in the signing of this song, um, they are leading us in prayer. Um, they're, they are part of um, our time together today. So, um, yes, if you, are, if you know the actions to this song or have been part of Kids Kingdom, please come up and help. Come on. We've got some adults coming to help as well, don't worry. If you don't know the actions but you just want to come on the stage and help, that's fine as well. Goes like this. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the light of his face shine on you. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the light of his face shine on you. The Lord be gracious to you. 
the Lord be gracious to you. May he turn his face to you and give you peace. May he turn his face to you and give you peace. One more time. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The light of his face shine on you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The light of his face shine on you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord be gracious to you. May he turn his face to you and give you peace. May he turn his face to you and give you I'm just going to pray for a moment. Just stay there, guys, for a moment. just going to pray. And at the end of our prayer, we're going to go through the, the song again. Um, these words, um, if they can stay up. Is that right, Helen? These words uh, will be um, the words as we pray. Um, there may be people um, that we want to um, pray for. There may be people in our lives, people we know, people in our communities, people in our world um, that we want um, them to know. Um, God's face um, turning to them, knowing that they, that they would know God's blessing them. Let's just pray for a moment. God, thank you that you do bless us. Thank you that you give us so much. God, I thank you for this um, offering uh, this morning as a sign of us being able to give back to you. Give back to you and for your kingdom purposes. Lord, we pray that your kingdom would continue to grow. Lord, in our families, that more people would know you, that they would know your blessing. Lord, we pray for people in our communities that you will keep them. Lord, that they would know the light of your face shining on them. Lord, as we think of our world Lord, it's very easy to think of lots of things uh, which don't go well, which aren't as good. Lord, I pray. Lord, I pray that uh, we would know you at work. God, help us to know how to pray. Give us the words to say. Lord, we pray for Christians in, our, in the world, in situations which are dangerous, which are not good. Lord, we pray that they might know your face, turning towards them and giving them peace in the midst of what's going on. Just in the quiet for a moment, I encourage you to bring any names of people just quietly in your own heart, individuals or people or places, to God. Let's use this song again as a prayer. I encourage you all to join in um, as we pray this prayer for ourselves, for each other, for our communities. The 
The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the light of his face shine on you. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the light of his face shine on you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord be gracious to you. May he turn his face to you and give you peace. May he turn his face to you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Go and grab a chair. We're going to continue uh, this morning in our sung worship um, as we um, focus on, continue to focus on God and how great He is. Um, for those of you um, who are helping, I've got a few people ready to help me. Um, and if you are um, a child, um, I need you to make a couple of things for me ready for my talk in a moment. So as we sing uh, the next couple of songs of worship, if you want to head towards the back and help James, James is going to wave. That's James. Um, go and help James. Um, and that would be fantastic. Let's stand together if we're able. And let's worship um, through these songs. Thank you. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us kneeling on this battleground seeing just how much you've done knowing every victory was your power in us scars and struggles on the way but with joy our hearts can say yes our hearts can say
shallow I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn a moment let's just remain as we sing those words the truth of those words that God doesn't let go of us God thank you God we praise you God we glorify you that you don't let go of us God may we know that in the good and the not so good times may we know the strength of that I pray Amen.
Amen. Please take your seats. Those people at the back, who, if you can come and grab your seats again. I need some volunteers. So I love it. Put that, they don't even know what they're volunteering for. You're so great. If you'd like to come and help me um, with my Bible reading, I need 17 volunteers. So come to the front. That's it. Brilliant. If you stand there, or a nice line of the front. Line yourselves up. Hello, hello. Excellent. Right. Let's count along. Andrew, if you get the front, that'd be fine. Thank you. Trish, if you can come in here somewhere, that's good. Right. Let's add up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Who's the person who should have volunteered that didn't? Thank you, Jenny. Round of applause for Jenny. The cameras will remain on the PowerPoint, don't worry. You'll have one verse to read each. Some people might need some help. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so this is taken from 1 Kings chapter 18, and we're going to read from verse 22 all the way through to verse 39. Should be the same words on the screen, so you'll get the idea if it goes wrong, okay? Um, And we'll see where we end up, okay? Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let them choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set, it, net, not set fire on it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you will call uh, the name of your God. I will call the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. He is God, all the people said. What is he say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on, call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. O Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought or busy or traveling. Maybe his... He is sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Midday passed and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response, no one answered, no one paid attention. Then Elijah, then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. They came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. Elijah took 12 stones, one each for the tribes, descending from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord and he dug a trench round it large enough to hold two seas of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, fill four large jars with water 
and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it the third time, he ordered, and they did it the third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and I have done all these things at your command. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also leaked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Round of applause for my readers. Thank you very much, guys. Sit yourself down. Thank you. Thank miracle happens um, amazing thing happens you have you have Elijah and hang on a moment nothing happened you have Elijah Elijah knows God to be God. Like many of us, we know that God is so real and powerful. It's amazing that we know that about God. It's so encouraging that we know that about God. For you to think about for a moment the things you know about how amazing God is. Then you had these other people. These other people who believed in another God. The God of Baal or Baal or Baal. You can choose, okay? But it wasn't the real God. And there was this amazing um, situation happens where Elijah says, hey guys, I know that God is real. I know that God is real. And he has this conversation and they, they build two altars, big piles of stones. They put some meat on it and, they, and Elijah says, you go first. Always a good Christian. He wasn't a Christian, obviously, because it was Old Testament before you tell me. But you go first. And they go first, and they're waiting for fire to come, and it doesn't come. And Elijah says four things, really important things, about the God that they were believing in, the God that they spent all their time worshipping. He says, maybe he's deep in thought, maybe he's busy, maybe he's traveling, maybe he's sleeping. Okay. Okay. Can I please have my four posters, James, to help us remember? They are coming, don't worry. And then, can I have a couple of... Look at all these hands. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, let's have you two, first of all, come and take my first poster. Come hold it up together, one each side. Hold up nice and high. I'll come this side. Come up here. They'll fall off. It's fine. We can clear up later. Go on, hold up. Okay. We have a thought bubble. Maybe God is busy thinking about something else. Now, we know that the God that we worship isn't busy thinking about other things. God, his thoughts are towards us. In Psalm 139, David talks about the fact that all your thoughts are amazing. I can't count them. God continues to think about you. He's not deep in thought, doing something different. He's thinking about us. Okay, next two volunteers. If you could just stand over there for me. Is that okay? Move back a little bit. I've got Josh and Sarah. Come and grab. I'll come to you, don't worry. Yep, pick up. Up on the stage. Okay. 
Okay. Maybe God is busy. Do you know, when I was thinking about how do we describe busy, I thought a mobile phone. How many of us say we're busy when we have our mobile phones in our hands? How many of us get busy by our phones in our hands? It's not today's talk. This, isn't, this is a poster because it says 96%. Well, no one ever has a phone on 96% either. So God isn't busy. God hasn't taken out his mobile phone, checking up on the, lo- lo- the latest what's going on, sport world, maybe the music world, perhaps checking on his socials. He's not mess- trying to catch up with all those people that have seen the, the double blue tick and he needs to reply, otherwise they'll be sad with him. He's not, he's not quickly um, playing, you know, I need to log on to my game in the last hour, otherwise I don't get my bonus. Um, God doesn't get busy like that. God does- isn't distant. God is ready to talk to us. Okay, if you could stand back over here, guys. Next two volunteers, I have Russian and a G-Lord. Come and grab my next poster for me and hold it up. And we need to position you on the right side here. That one? Yep, pick it up together, one each side. Can I stand up here? Okay, yep, hold it up together. That's it, so if you hold one side. Excellent. Excellent. God doesn't disappear off traveling. We might go on holiday. We might have been on holiday. We travel around a lot. God doesn't say, um, put on his out of office. God doesn't say, I just need a break, guys. I just need to, I need to be somewhere else for a few minutes. God doesn't think to himself, I need, I need something else to do. I just need to go visiting someone. I'm bored and I've had enough. We're reminded in Joshua that God says, that he will be with us wherever we go. He says to Isaiah, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I'm with you. God doesn't go on holiday. Okay, if you two can drop back to that gap there. Last two volunteers. Um, yes, Joe. And another volunteer to help Joe. Someone come and help Joe. James is going to help Joe. Well done, James. Elijah says to the prophets of old, maybe God is sleeping. Shout louder, wake him. Shout louder and wake him. God doesn't have a sleep. God doesn't have times off. God isn't at a situation where suddenly he says, I don't want to be here. Please come and stand over here for a minute. You don't need to hold your hands up quite so high. You see, for us, as we think about God, the God of Elijah, our God, maybe you've already been on holiday, maybe you're going on holiday, maybe you're not traveling on holiday, but it feels like holiday time. It's important for us to remember that God doesn't have a holiday. God isn't, God isn't deep in thought. He's not too busy. God's not on holiday. He's not sleeping. But God is always present. And for each of us, as we think about perhaps being on holiday from school, college, work. Do you think about being on holiday? We don't take a holiday from God. Just as much as God doesn't take a holiday, the same needs to be true for us. That in our living our lives as Christians, as we think about who God is, that we don't sign off for six weeks. Don't think, let's leave it until the mix and then let's reconnect with God. But I encourage you, to think about the fact that God is still with you. When we go on holiday, it's not saying we don't go on holiday, but we don't give God a holiday. But what are the important things? What are the important things about your relationship with God that you will maintain? doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter which country you're in, doesn't matter if your alarm clock's going off because of work. What are the important things that you will maintain as you think about who God is in your life? It's great. Over the next six, seven, eight weeks, um, we won't see each other quite so much because lots of us will be around. We'll miss each other. People will not always be here. But God is always with you. God never lets go. We need to remember not to let go of God. Let's make sure that we're not too deep in thought for God. Let's make sure that we're not too busy for God, that we're not having a sleep from our relationship with God. Let's make sure that we're not off 
400 miles to go, Manchester. We're not off giving God a holiday. I'm sure for lots of us, we don't do it consciously. But subconsciously, there are times where we switch off from our day-to-day Christian living. Let me just pray. God, in this amazing miracle that we hear where you send fire from heaven and everyone says you are God. I pray that for those those people that we spend time with, that we will be able to show them, not in the same way, but that we will be able to show them that you are God. That God, that we will be able to show them that you're not a God who's too busy for us or deep in thought. You're not having a sleep. You don't go off on holiday, but you are always present. God, give us the strength. Lord, I pray that you'll convict where we need to be convicted, that we don't give you a holiday, but we continue to live our lives your way, whatever. Amen. Going to um, finish our time together uh, this morning um, in sung worship. And as we continue to sing, um, to think about who God is in our lives. Um, so you can go sit down now, guys. Well done. As we, as we sing, if you're able, I encourage you to stand and let us worship God together. God, I pray that for all of us, that we would continue to praise your name. Lord, that we would lift um, the praise that's due your name. God, I pray that um, you would be with us. Lord, I thank you that you will be with us. God, may we know you with us, I pray. Amen. If you'd like someone to pray with you. Um, at the end of our time together, um, please come forward. There'll be people who are very willing to um, pray with you. Um, love it if you're able to stay um, for t- tea and coffee um, at the end of our time. Um, if you're visiting <coughs> or new, please say hi to us. It'll be great to get to know you. Thank you very much.